See, we believe, yeah, God's power is unlimited, partly in theory. But we don't feel it. We don't experience it. Now, I want you to notice there in that passage of Ephesians, he says, I keep asking. We've been talking about circling our prayers, finding that one thing that we need to pray through until it becomes a reality. The writer of Ephesians did not give up praying. I keep asking. And when it seems like it's not going to get answered, what do you do? Praise, Praise God. Keep on asking. Don't give up. Keep on asking. What does he keep asking? Not that God would give his church $50,000 but instead would give them, quote, the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they may know him better. Now, why would that information be helpful? So that they could know the great power reserved for those who believe. Know it, that means experience it. That means live it. And not have this disconnect. God is, yeah, is unlimited power, and yet $50,000? It's impossible. Break that disconnect down by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because once we know the great power of God, you hear me now? Once we know the great power of God, we realize the sky is the limit. Then we can pray bold, daring, circle prayers. $50,000, no problem. Circle it right there. I am going to pray that $50,000 in. And you know what? God doesn't mind us asking for $50,000. God doesn't mind us praying these bold prayers to serve Him. You know what God minds? That we don't ask Him. That we just pray these safe little prayers. God despises, and actually, you know what else God despises? Griping. Complaining. Complaining about what we don't have. Man, if you want the wrath of God to come down on your life, then just start griping about something you don't have. Oh, we don't have that $50,000, so we can't do it. People with cheapskates, and they wouldn't open up their wallet. These people just, I don't know. And this pastor, he's not leading us like that. Cry and complain. It works against you every week. Last week we talked about Israel escaping slavery in Egypt. And God did this amazing thing of taking them out of slavery into the desert, provided in the desert bread for them, at least sustenance to keep them going. Water and bread. It's good. Really good. But what does bread miss? It doesn't have protein. So the people started craving protein. They wanted meat. It was a problem for them. But you know what they did to try to remedy that problem? Go ahead and say it. You know it. What? Wine. And complain. Yes. Moses, why did you lead us out of the nice, safe place where we were in Egypt where we were getting all the meat and vegetables that we wanted to? And now we're out here in the desert whining and complaining. You know, wow. That would uh, be like, you know, you, I'm up here and you think, Pastor, you speak too, too loud. You bother me. Or you think, Pastor, you don't speak loud enough. I can't understand you. Or, Pastor, you talk too fast, you know. Or, Pastor, you're too negative. I don't want to listen to you.
But instead of coming and telling me your concern, you go to one another and tell that concern to. Oh, 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 how do you think that would make me feel? Terrible. But that's completely normal. I've been serving churches for over 30 years, and that's what churches do. Why do you think neither one of my kids are pastors today? <laughs> over my dead body, they would ever try something like that. I know how churches are. I know how I am. And if there's anything that makes us feel bad, it's that. And that's, and that's what God's people did to God. Now what would have been a better or constructive way would have been for them to go directly to God and tell Him their situation. I need meat. We're hungry. This bread's just not doing it anymore. God, we're grateful for this bread, but, but we, we, need, we need meat now. And instead of holding God hostage by saying, either you give me meat or I'm not coming on Sunday mornings anymore. Instead, they told God their concern. And then they circled him knowing that God always, always meets our needs. Amen? And God's power is unlimited. Amen? You circle. I need this meat. I need this housing. I need this job. I need this health. I need this relationship healed. You circle. And you know that God's power is unlimited. And you know that he wants to come through for you. So you do that. Well, well, Israel didn't do that. God was hurt. God, Moses had a little conversation. You got your Bibles open to Numbers 11. I want you to look at verse 10. Numbers chapter 11, verse 10. Moses heard the people of every family wailing at the entrance to their tents. Okay, now picture this. Now there are 600,000 people who would come out of Egypt. So Moses' church was 600,000 people. I have less than 100. Much more reasonable, okay? But imagine this, that he's your pastor. And Moses has heard the people wailing. They are wailing. They are griping. They are complaining at the entrance to their tents. They're miserable. Then the Lord became exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. Oh boy. Okay. So you got a church that's mad, okay? And then you got on one side. And then you've got God on the other side who's angry, who's getting more and more angry at your people. Okay, now you feel for the people. When you're suffering, I feel, I really feel for you. So Moses, he felt for those people. But, but then, he loves God. And yet, God's becoming exceedingly angry. He asked the Lord, verse 11, now listen to this prayer. This is an amazing prayer. Why have you brought this trouble on your servant? You ever pray like that? <laughs> What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? And what is that? Yeah, he's being honest here. He's gone to the source and he's being honest. And that's okay. Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? A little sarcasm in there, right? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised, you promised, you promised to build on hope. Remember that. He's, he's now bringing those promises back, that God is bringing his word back. You promised on hope to their ancestors to give them this land. Verse 13. Where? Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep wailing to me. 
Give us meat to eat. I cannot carry these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. Boy, he is pouring his heart out. This is, this is from the gut right here. I mean, this is, wow. If this is how you are going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. Sometimes you have no idea what a pastor prays. <laughs> Just go ahead and kill me. If I have found favor in your eyes, then do not let me face my own ruin. And then, we jump down to 21, but Moses said, Here I am, among 600,000 men on foot. And you say, I will give them meat to eat for a whole month? I mean, he is just like astounded. A whole month? He can't even fathom this whole thing. Would they have enough if flocks and herds were slaughtered for them? Would they have enough if all the fish in the sea were caught for them? Now, listen to, verse, listen to God's answer, verse 23. The Lord answered Moses, Is the Lord's arm too short? Now you will see whether or not what I say will come true for you. See, God is infinitely, infinitely bigger and stronger than any dream that we can possibly have out there. Is that, is that true? Amen? Are you nodding off or what? Do you believe this? Remember you started this service saying that you believe his power was unlimited. That he had no end to it. There was no way in Moses' imagination how he could figure out logistically how could 600,000 people have meat for an entire month? How does that even work? It's the same way if I said we're going to raise $50,000 like that. And you're going to say, I can't even imagine on fixed incomes and, and a few people, we have that 50, how, how does that even happen? Now look at verse 31. A wind, a wind went out from the Lord. I didn't even see that coming. And drove quail in from the sea. It scattered them to up to two cubits deep all around the camp, as far as a day's walk in any direction. Now I want you to catch the significance of this. Quail tend to live by water, okay, not in the desert. And they don't fly long distances, so they're lost, all right? If it wasn't for a supernatural wind, west wind, they would have never made it this far inland. So this is a meteorological miracle that's taking place. And it's not just a miraculous west wind. The clouds burst and rain quail from the sky. Okay, now hold on to this. I'm going to tell you how much quail came in. This is just beyond our comprehension. Based on the Hebrew system of measurement, a day's walk was approximately 15 miles in any direction. Do you walk 15 miles in a, in a day? So if you square the radius and multiply it by pi, I don't, but I looked it up. We're talking about an area that's almost 700 square miles. To put that in perspective, Fremont is approximately 77 square miles. So this is like 10 times more the area, okay? And not only is that area 10 times bigger, but the quail were three feet high. Pile three feet high. Wow, can you imagine seeing that many birds flying into camp? This wind blowing them in. Wow, three feet high, covering 700 square miles. It was so massive. And then once they stopped falling, the Israelites started gathering them. Ten homers multiplied by 600,000 people equals six million homers at a minimum. 
and a little more equated to roughly 200 liters. And assuming that the quail were, were of an average size, it ran somewhere in the neighborhood of 105 million quail. Are you impressed? Is that a lot? Wow. See, God doesn't just provide in a dramatic fashion. He provides in a dramatic fashion. Wow. Who saw that coming? But Moses had the guts to circle the prayer, brought it to God. Despite his unbelief, there's some people that, that, that espouse this belief that you have to have all the faith before you go to the Lord. If you have enough faith, then all this is going to come in. Do you think Moses had enough faith for that many quail to come in? I don't. He couldn't figure it out for anything. But he's not God. But the point is he circled it. He brought it to the Lord. How big is your God, I ask you? Is your God bigger than a positive MRI? Is your God bigger than a negative evaluation? Is your God bigger than your secret sin or your secret dream? Here's Moses. He's perplexed. How can God possibly do this? And yet God provided it. You see, is there any limit to the power that you have access to? Yes or no? Still with me yet? Yes or no? Any limit to the power that you have access to with God? Still no? Still no. Okay, so why do we think $50,000 would be a difficult task to raise? Why? Because we've never done it before or haven't done it for a long time. See, the size of our prayers depends on the size of our God. And if God knows no limits, then why do we know limits? Wow. You know, God exists outside of the four space-time dimensions he created. And we need to pray that way. Kind of reminds me of the man who uh, was sizing up God by asking, God, how long, how, how, um, long is a million years to you? And God said, Oh, a million years is like a second. And the man asked, how much is a million dollars to you? God said, well, a million dollars is like a penny. The man smiled and said, well then, could you spare me a penny? And, uh, and God smiled back and says, sure, just wait a second. <laughs> With God, there's no small no easy, there's no if difficult, there's no impossible. God isn't subject to the natural laws that God instituted. God has no beginning and has no end. When God gives a vision, God always makes a way for that provision. So my question for you today is, what is the vision that God is placing on your heart? If growing this church and opening these doors up to our neighborhood is a vision from God, then why would he not provide what we needed? If there is something that you are trying to do that God has placed on your heart, why are you not doing it? Because why? I don't get it. Because I don't have what? I don't have the resources, oh, so your God is limited. I don't have the knowledge, oh, so your God is limited. Um, because I don't know what to do, is that the problem? Because God has, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God is going to place upon you a vision to glorify Him. What you need to ask is, what is that vision that God is placing on my heart 
and any vision that he has placed on your heart, he is going to provide the resources to fulfill those. Unless it is that God's power is limited and you are decided, overwhelming to me, that his, his resources are not limited. His resources are not limited. So what's keeping us from that? 